west of Cork City Centre sits the picturesque village of Sunday's Well, and it's here at the Lee Fields where the River Lee splits into two channels, north and south, which encompass the city centre. It is a beautiful sunny uh, morning here. And we've entered the river at the Lee Fields and we are going to be taking the south channel right through to uh, the marina. We have a look over this side there. I suppose you can see how I get on. Yeah. And if I capsize, then at least you know it's a bit dodgy for you. So that was our first weir done. <clears throat> Somehow I feel I'm oddly not dressed for the occasion. I could be going out to dinner. The first bridge that we come to on the south channel of the river is a new addition, having been built in 1999 as part of a collaboration between the Kingsley Hotel and Cork City Council. It's an iron footbridge, and if we stand on it facing west, we can see Cork Victorian waterworks to our right, along with the ominous St. Anne's Lunatic Asylum up on the hill. As we continue down the south channel of the river, the next bridge we come to is Brunswick Bridge. This was built in the 1820s and 30s and connects the western road to the west of Cork. It's now known as O'Neill Crowley Bridge, named after Cork Fenian Peter O'Neill Crowley. This part of the river is absolutely beautiful. Um, a lot of it sits between UCC and the Bonds. So you don't really get to uh, enjoy it unless you're in it. Just a short paddle down the river, out of view from Western Road, is the Western Gateway footbridge, which opened along with the building of the same name in 2009. The bridge connects the Western Gateway building to UCC's Brookfield Medical Sciences building. This next bridge, oh my God, there's two. There's a really beautiful old one behind it. Um, a Latisse. Lettuce? Am I pronouncing that right? Is it lettuce or lettuce? These two bridges so close to each other provide a nice juxtaposition. We have this new bridge from the Bonds Hospital, which was opened in 2019 as part of its 70 million euro expansion. And next to it, we have a very old bridge which used to go to Castle White House. It's a very old lettuce truss bridge, which dates back to 1884. It was fabricated by the Maclean Ironworks, who were based out of Glasgow back in the 1800s. They ceased trading in 1979. Wow, this is the bridge that goes over uh, just by where the old city jail used to be, the male city jail, and it's now the Cane Building in UCC. Um, a really beautiful bridge. Loads of stalactites and stalagmites. Tights for top, top comes down, stalactites. Echo! Echo! No, I'm, no, I'm not selling the echo, I'm sorry. Jail Bridge opened in 1835 and provided access to the newly built Cork County Jail. Before that, access was mainly garnered through travelling up Barrack Street and along College Road. The bridge opened in conjunction with the newly built Western Road and Brunswick Bridge, opening the city to the west.
As we continue down the grounds of UCC, we come to Kavanagh Bridge. It's named after Dr. Tom Kavanagh, who is a Cork philanthropist. He graduated from UCC in 1951. This is a beautiful part of town, and if you haven't been over this bridge yet, I would highly recommend it. It connects the walkway along the river below Aula Max to Parrot's Inch, which is adjacent to the Western Road. The wooden slats are beautifully illuminated after dark, and it's open to the public every day from 8am until 7pm. It's a lovely place to stroll. Before we arrive at our next bridge, the Glucksman Art Gallery is perched by the river. This reminds me very much of the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao in Spain. The angular wooden facade behind the trees makes it look like something out of a sci-fi movie. This beautiful bridge that's at the main entrance to UCC is beautiful. Beautiful as it is, there's been a tumultuous history of bridges here. This one that we see now dates from 1929 and it's called Alumni Bridge. It's a ferro-concrete bridge with stone-cut piers and wrought iron railings either side. However, two bridges predate this one, with the first being built of Oregon Pine in 1879. It was the university's attempt to provide more direct access to the city via Western Road. Owing to its material, it required regular maintenance and painting. Around 1909, after just 30 years of service, it was found to be beyond repair and it was decided to replace it. A reinforced concrete bridge designed by James Waller, a postgraduate engineering student, was chosen. Perhaps this was because it was the cheapest of the five tenders received, the other four being for steel bridges. The Waller Bridge was completed in 1910 and had a span of 72 feet, with a pier in the centre and a diamond-shaped lattice panel running along the sides. Wonderful. That concludes that, you may think. Well, sadly not. Whoops. That bridge completely gave way six years later. You know what they say. Buy cheap, pay twice. With the destruction of the Waller Bridge in 1916, it was nearly a decade before the bridge that we see here was built. The following years also had much disruption to civil society. The Irish Free State was founded in 1922 and the new country faced a budgetary reality. Funding was eventually secured and Alumni Bridge that we see here opened in 1929. And look at that willow tree. Willow, willow. I don't think that's a willow sound. Willow tree, willow tree. This is the bridge that goes over uh, up to Donovan's Road. Donovan's Bridge opened in 1902 and is named after Thomas Donovan who developed the land on the south bank of the river into the houses that we can see still there today. The housing estate was called Fernhurst Avenue up until the turn of the 20th century when it was renamed O'Donovan's Road. He paid for the majority of the bridge and it took considerable time and effort to have it built. Oh, here we go for another weir. Slightly down from the most lethal weir on the River Lee is a lovely bit of rail infrastructure. Off we go again on our merry way. At the bottom left of the screen you can still see a bit of the railway track left over before this line was decommissioned in the 1960s. These two pillars here you support uh, the train bridge of the West Cork Railway, which went uh, to Bandon and on to Clonakilty and Skibbereen. I think I'm going to crash into them. Hang on. Look at them. So that used to be the West Cork Railway pillars. 
As we make our way onto Western Road, the river opens up, and the first bridge that we're greeted by is the one that goes to the River Lee Hotel. This opened in 2010, but there was a bridge there originally predating it from the 1980s. Lancaster Bridge, which we can see in the background here, is a surviving bridge of the same type that would have went to the River Lee Hotel. Just in front of that, we have St Finbar's Bridge, a new addition to the city built in 1999 to commemorate Cork's patron saint, St Finbar. As we approach built-up urban areas along Wandsford Quay, we come across Clark's Bridge, which is a beautiful old sandstone bridge from 1776. This bridge is beautiful. It is so old. It remains largely unchanged from when it was built, and its exposed sandstone construction lends itself towards giving this bridge a very appealing purple colour. Buried beneath the streets of Cork City lie many of its medieval waterways. Here, at Proby's Quay, we have one of the oldest surviving medieval waterways in the city, dating from the 11th century. Does it go up much farther? Yeah. There's so many of these tributaries that join the River Lee. I would love to have lived back in a time when they were more exposed. And I guess the River Bride was the last one that was kind of covered over. As we come onto the main stretch of the south channel of the river, the first bridge that we come to is the oldest bridge in Cork City. It's over 300 years old, having been built in 1713, and it replaced a wooden bridge that was there originally, serving as an entrance to the city centre. Lanonagle Bridge opened in 1985 as part of commemorations for Cork's 800th anniversary being a city. It connects the Grand Parade to South Parish, where Nanonagel's convent is based. She was famed for educating the poor in Cork, and today it's been restored as a museum and it's open to the public along with a beautiful cafe. At this stage, it's time for a deserved pit stop, and it really feels like only in Cork could it happen where you can kayak up to a window and have your friend drop you out two cigarettes and a lighter. <laughs> nice one. Want a bag? <laughs> I'd love one. What do we like? Does smoking make you look cool? Of course it does. Everybody looks cooler smoking. The people of Cork are so generous, <laughs> just kayaking down the river like, excuse me sir, do you have a cigarette and a lighter? Parliament Bridge, with the stunning Holy Trinity Church in the background, has history dating back to 1764 when an original timber bridge stood in its place. Parliament Bridge, restored in 1992, could do with a bit of TLC. It's got these beautiful lights, but sadly, some of them have been knocked off. I hope the lights and their lanterns and accompanying light columns are restored and refitted much like St. Patrick's Bridge. It would be great to see this bridge in its best condition as it's over 200 years old, opening in 1806. Trinity Bridge was built in 1977 and it does a great job of connecting Union Quay to College of Calm a very nice Art Deco building dating from the 1930s. Parnell Bridge is up next, and it's the third bridge at this location. The first one dated back to 1830 and was the city's first drawbridge. 
The bridge that we see here is a more recent adaptation from 1971, replacing the previous two drawbridges. It's a little bit choppy. Clontarf Bridge opened in 1912 along with Brian Brew Bridge on the north channel of the river. These bridges rose up to allow ships underneath and they also had rail infrastructure allowing trains from Kent Station over to the Albert Street Station which hosted the West Cork and Bandon Railway. Currently, the last bridge over the south channel of the river is Eamon de Valera Bridge, and it was constructed in 1984. There are plans to build two additional bridges over the river as Cork City expands, one of them accommodating the proposed light rail transport system. Some absolutely beautiful, beautiful scenery there at the start of the river, and as we get into the city then, um, it's equally beautiful. Lots more mystery and intrigue. I love those little bits that just join the river lead. You have absolutely no idea where they go. It's very exciting to get to travel up them. That concludes our South Channel Bridge excursion. I really hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.